Hey there, race fans. It's race day. Top five with me, Frank Five. Kansas Speedway, track where you can move around. The restarts are absolutely wild. A lot of passing, a lot of side-by-side -side action, a lot of different pit strategies. A track where you can basically run anywhere. A track that's fun. One of the most exciting mile-and-a-half tracks, especially with 550 horsepower package on it. At the end of the day, the birthday boy, shining bright as he picks up his first win of the season and has officially locked himself into the playoffs for the 2021 season and what we can still consider the best season ever. Let's get into it. Number one, Kyle Busch, Rowdy Bush, the man who turned 36 years old today, the second time he has captured victory on his birthday. The last time that happened was 12 years ago in the night race at Richmond, won today's Bushy McBush Race 400. Yes, that was the name of the uh, race, courtesy of a Bush poll to name the name of this Kansas race sponsored by Bush. In all seriousness, Kyle Bush won today's race in Kansas over Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski, Matthew Benedetto, and Chase Elliott. Kyle Bush, at long last, is beginning to get his mojo back because last year Kyle Bush went through one of the most difficult years of his NASCAR Cup Series career where he was not really running as competitive as what everybody else was. He was a top 10 driver at the very least, but he still wasn't able to punch it into victory lane. The playoffs came around. He still hadn't won. He was eliminated after the round of 12, but then he played upset in the next to last race of, in the uh, next to last race of the round of eight, where he was able to hold on and win his first race of the season at Texas Motor Speedway, his only one of the season to date. And this season, he came in with a brand new crew chief in Ben Basher after he and Adam Stevens parted ways, basically trying to focus on a brand new, um, you know, a new environment for Kyle Busch and the whole race team. They started out the season winning the Bush Clash at Daytona. They've had a some couple of good runs this year. Not bad, but certainly not to their performance. They have had some good runs in the mile and a half tracks. And today they capitalized on some late race restarts, passing the dominant car today, Kyle Larson, late in the race and was able to hold off those last two restarts on pretty old tires compared to a couple other guys coming behind him on fresh rubber and was able to hold off and win his second race at Kansas. And he's he's had an interesting history at Kansas. When he first came here, he was not good. He had a lot of bad races. Then he finally won at Kansas in 2016 in the Cup Series and he was able to win his second Cup race at this track today. And also, not only was today his birthday and not only was the second one in Kansas, but he won last night's truck race on a late race restart. So the birthday boy had quite the weekend and... It's a big moment for Kyle Busch. He's now locked into the playoffs. He came in this race 50-plus points above the cut line, which is pretty good. But with the way the year's been getting new winners almost each and every single week, people were wondering, is Kyle Busch going to get his mojo back? Will he win a race? Today, he got the job done. He's in the playoffs. And now that Kyle Busch has one win, watch out. He's going to be in a position to win a lot more. I think Kyle Busch is about to get his groove back. Number two, Kevin Harvick, still looking for his first win of the season, finally had perhaps one of his best runs of the 2021 season by far. He had a top five finish last week at Talladega. Today, he came and ran top 10 for the majority of the race, had to overcome a little adversity late in the race. When pitting under yellow, he was caught for a tire violation when the tire got out of the pit box and he had to restart tail on the longest line, but took those fresh tires and worked his way. He was eighth place on that last restart and fought his way all the way up to second place. A strong performance by the Bush Light car and Kevin Harvick. I feel like that the team is beginning to get their mojo back too, because when it's Kevin Harvick's turn and he wins a race, he's going to be dominant and he's going to be one to watch out for the rest of the season. I think that the Ford team is, again, it's beginning to find the mojo, the Stuart Haas organization, the other cars still struggling a little bit, but Kevin Harvick, it seems like week after week, seems to be the dominant force of that team, even under tough times and pretty mediocre runs by the whole organization. Harvick's able to keep them afloat, and today he was able to get the job done, a second place finish, a strong result for the Ford team. It's only a matter of time before Harvick wins this year. Number three, Kyle Larson came from 32nd after... Starting there because of average finish, your points position, and your fastest lap, combining the determination of where you start a race this year with limited qualifying and only a couple events this year, Larson had to start 32nd today, but he came flying through the field like he had Bullet Bill like you have in Mario Kart. He literally was the fastest car today. He led over almost half the race, 
which is a dominant force. He won stage two. He definitely had a, the car to beat today. But then in the final stage, when we had all those late race restarts, Larson was still able to hold on, battling it out with Denny Hamlin, who ended up hitting the wall late, but he was able to rebound and finish 12th. Larson didn't get the best restart in the second to last restart. Kyle Busch got him. And on the final restart, Larson in the sixth position, or excuse me, fourth position, pushing his good buddy Ryan Blaney, trying to get the lead from Kyle Busch and heading into turn one. Larson still in the bumper. Blaney gets Blaney a little loose. They were able to hang on, but both of them bounce off the wall, and Larson fell all the way back to finish in the 20th spot. The, pretty disappointing. But there was 20, 19 to 20th. Pretty disappointing for Kyle Larson, considering he had the best car today. He had the car. He was going to run away with this thing. But all the cautions late, you know, brought the whole field back to him, and didn't get a long enough run to pull away from everybody. So it is what it is, but still the five team and Larson have definitely been strong contenders week in and week out. They're going to have much more, many more wins this year. I mean, he's still having a great recovery to get back into NASCAR after all he went through last year. So Kyle Larson fans, be patient. You already have one win. You have another win coming for it. He will be in the conversation battling for the championship this year. Number four, the restarts. I mean, every time we come to Kansas Speedway, it seems like every I, I'm, I'm literally on the edge of my seat grasping to my heart almost as much as Talladega. I mean, these mile-and-a-half races with this 550 horsepower package on tracks like Kansas today look like super speedway race starts. They're all together for multiple laps before they begin to spread out. The restarts today were just absolutely bonkers. So intense, all side-by-side, side, bumping each other. And you know, like three wide in the corners, four wide in the corners at one point. I felt like these guys were going to wreck. There were a couple of times where they did wreck, but not as bad as we thought looking at everybody running together like that. These restarts at Kansas provide so much excitement. I mean, the 550 horsepower package makes the restarts and the racing after the restarts at Kansas a lot of fun to watch. I mean, there was passing today, but there was the drama at the end of last year's fall race where Joey Logano, who went on to win that race over Kevin Harvick, battling for a playoff spot to advance into the championship four. There was complaints with that package with Harvick stuck behind Logano. He couldn't he could stay in his tracks, but he couldn't close up and try to make a move and pass, and people were upset about that. I felt like you saw some of that today, but clean air definitely made the most uh, made the difference in a positive way for the guy in front. It's a big uh, impact in a negative way for the guys behind trying to pass you for the lead. Uh, we did have passing for the lead. We did have a lot of side-by-side -side action. I feel like Kansas never disappoints on the restarts. It makes it a lot of fun for the fans who were in attendance today, including Super Bowl winning head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, Andy Reid, had his first NASCAR visit today, his first live NASCAR race, and I think he got a good kick out of it today. He showed up on the pre-race show with uh, the Fox guys and Chris Myers and Jeff Gordon and Clint Boyer, the hometown boy. Uh, the restarts today, a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about these guys until this track until we come back here in the fall for a playoff race. And number five, little controversy in the middle of the final stage. When everybody was completing their green flag pit stops, a tire rolled out into the grass and the, and the uh, front stretch uh, grass from Tyler Reddick's pit box. And that tire sat there and NASCAR didn't throw a caution until the last car on the lead lap cycled through their green flag pit stop and then NASCAR threw the yellow. There were a lot of complaints um, on social media and as well in the race as about like whether or not NASCAR was going to throw the caution with that thing still out there. They said, apparently we're going to wait until the pit stops had cycled through, but it wasn't necessarily out there towards the racetrack or it could be an obstacle, but I understand that safety and equi uh, equipment and safety is of the utmost importance in NASCAR. So I understand NASCAR's decision to wait a little bit. Some people were really happy about that. Some NASCAR drivers, you know, kind of like, you know, I felt like NASCAR made the right decision to let everyone cycle through and then throw the yellow flag so it didn't screw anybody over. I mean, we don't want to affect the outcome of a race. And if that thing laid in the pit box, I mean, laid down the grass and we threw it yellow immediately, it could have screwed a lot of guys over. So I think NASCAR made the right decision. People had their own opinion about it. The drivers had their opinion about it. I have my opinion about it. I felt like they did a good job. I felt like they made the right call. Um, they may talk a bit. It'll be a little bit of a topic of discussion in the news this week. But, you know, safety is of the utmost importance. We don't want anybody to get hurt. We don't want anybody to be affected by something like that. So I felt in my right mind NASCAR made the right decision to wait and throw the yellow until all the pit stops under green were cycled through. So that's all I have to say about that topic. 
Finally, driver recap Chase Elliott. Fifth place finish today. Very solid run. Started from the 17th spot, but we were in the top five, top 10 for a majority of the race today. A couple of restarts, we fell back, which, you know, it's, it happens at Kansas times, but then the long runs began to... Um, began to process and Ellie was able to pick up a couple of spots. He was one of the guys late in those uh, yellows that he was able to come in with Brad Kozlowski and others to put on some four fresh tires and fought away all the way up and looked at one point on the last lap that Ellie was going to finish second or third off a of turn two. Kozlowski kind of squeezes in the wall but thankfully we were able to bring it home with a fifth plate yeah, fifth place finish. Very solid run for the team considering we hadn't had a top five since the Martinsville race a couple weeks ago. And this is Elliott's first top five slash top ten at a mile and a half track this year. About time. It's about time we stopped the bleeding on the mile and a half, which Elliott's been pretty good at. I mean, we were good at Vegas this year. Then we had that spin. Luckily, we didn't hit anything. We were only able to get back to 13th. Then we went to Atlanta. I felt like we, I mean, uh, we, we, we were pretty good at Atlanta Motor Speedway in the first stage. Then we had a little bit of that piece, you know, on our hood, uh, affected the aerodynamics. We were slow a little bit. We were able to fix back, that back up and we're about to head back to the front till the motor blew up. Um, what, was, what was the other mile and a half? I think, I think we ran another mile and a half. Um, but Elliot, Elliot's average finish from what I heard in the previous was 21.8 on a mile and a half. So today, it was good to stop the bleeding and get a good result out of that. So props to the nine team, and he felt like they did a good job in the latter stages of this race to prepare themselves. And now we got a couple tracks again upcoming where they benefit Chase Elliott at Darlington. He's run well there. He has had some good finishes, and then he's... There's some finishers where he's run well but didn't get the finish that they deserved. Then there's Dover, a track where he's won at before, and he's been really good at it ever since he got to that track. And then Circuit of the Americas, the first NASCAR trip to that facility. I can't wait, and we all know how good of a road course racer Elliot is. He's going to be the one to beat in that event. But a win's coming, Elliot fans. I know we got a 10th different winner today, but we will get a win, and based on where we are in points, we're going to feel pretty good when that win comes to us. And when we get that win, another one's going to come. And another one's going to come. And Ellie will be battling for the championship, I believe, by the end of the season. So a fifth-place finish today was a great way to stop the bleeding of our lackluster performances, or shall we say lackluster luck on Mile and a Half so far. I do also want to recap the video um, announcing some sad news that I saw before we got to live coverage for today's race. Former NASCAR driver, former NASCAR Xfinity driver, Eric McClure, who has been known to drive for his father, I mean, not drive for his father, my apologies, drive for uh, Johnny Davis Motorsports and uh, what was then TriStar Motorsports, made a couple of cup starts in his career for um, Morgan McClure Racing, and attempted the Daytona 500 a couple of times, didn't make any of them. Um, I found out this morning that at the age of 42, Eric McClure had sadly passed away. Um, very sad, you know, he's survived by his, I think, seven children, a lot of children. Uh, he'd been through a lot in his career, of course. Most people remember Eric McClure for his uh, 2012 accident at Talladega where he uh, ended up, um, I think I think he broke his leg in that and he had to miss a couple of races. He's had a lot of injuries in his career driving in NASCAR. He's had a lot of concussions. He's had a lot of surgery. Um, he had been dealing with some issues in his personal life. I won't reveal the details because it's probably best not to discuss it, but it's very sad to lose uh, Eric McClure at the age of 42. So my condolences go out to the McClure family, uh, his, all of his children. Um, Eric McClure, rest in peace. And uh, I hope that you are, I hope that you are, have moved to a better life with the good Lord. So we will miss you and um, rest in peace. So yeah, that's, um, that's my take on that. And the entire race today in general, I just wanna say again, <laughs> Bushy McBush race. <laughs> that might be the funniest name for a NASCAR sponsored event I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Bushy McBush. <laughs> a Bush won today, but he didn't have the sponsor on his car to uh, show that it really meant anything. But uh, I got a Bush won today, so I guess that deserves something. Um, so interesting. So next week we'll be heading to Darlington Speedway for the Goodyear 400, the throwback weekend. The first time that NASCAR has been running in quite a while, excluding last year with the COVID pandemic changing up the schedule and everything. The first time in the actual scheduled season with no delays or any changes at all that Darlington will have 
a cup race in the spring once again, while usually having its Darlington Labor Day weekend later in the summer this year. We're going back to Darlington in the spring for the 293-lap event, 400 miles. Throwback weekend moves to the spring this time, and we've got a lot of paint schemes announced. A lot of them look good. Some look okay. Some look and they could have done better, but I'm excited for Darlington next weekend with the low downforce package for that race. That's going to make it a lot of fun. So we'll see who's going to come out on top and conquer the lady in black. So subscribe, like, congrats to Kyle Busch, the bur happy birthday. You're a winner. You're in the playoffs. I hope you all have a great week and see you then.